Hello YouTube, Robin Hood Bricks here and I'm really excited today because we're going to be doing part four of the My Own Train series which has seen the Flying Knotsman train come into life with its two tenders uh, and today we're going to add to that even more by adding carriages as well. Ooh. Good, good. Well, last week's haul got us the final pieces we needed for the carriages for the Flying Knotsman, being a load of these brand new, wonderful, sort of curved end roof pieces. So I've got 10 of those to do five carriages. Uh, and I kind of asked you in the uh, video whether you wanted me to press on with this build, doing the carriages, making a start on them, or one of my many other ones coming up, like uh, finishing off the Daily Bugle, or starting the supermarket, or there's a restaurant coming up, more ride amendments, all sorts of stuff, cabinet, secret one, secret two, secret three, secret four, <laughs> so many things coming up. Uh, I'm definitely not short of ideas. Um, but the one you picked was for me to press on with the train build, which I was very happy to hear because I'm very keen to see these things. I haven't built them in real life at all, only on Lego Digital Designer, so I'm just as keen to see them as you are. Uh, but I thought I'd check just in case you were getting a bit bored of me doing train builds recently. There do seem to have been quite a few. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, so that's been really good to hear and I'm really excited as a result. So what are we doing today? Well, if we look at this LDD, which I'm deliberately not not showing you the finished article, uh, even though you've probably seen the finished article on the thumbnail. Uh, we've done three bits of the locomotive that make up the Flying Knotsman, uh, and I'm going to be having five separate carriages that are after it. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, so that's what we're going to make a start on today. But I don't want to do all five as one video because, well, that would spoil you, I think. Uh, and it sort of wouldn't be fair as well on me and the fact that it's taken me an absolute age to design these things and an age to uh, buy all the parts as well. So if I kind of <laughs> finish off all those carriages in one go in a massive flourish, then basically, well, I'll only get one video out of it in short. So I'm going to try and split these into three sections. So I'm going to make two standard carriages today. Uh, then I'm going to make uh, one of them upgrade it into a different type of carriage and add a third. Uh, and I'm going to do the fourth and the fifth. Uh, and by the time we've done them all, they'll all be different. So I need to push this train out of the way. It'll be a very pretty backdrop though. Get Robin out of the way. Maybe you can look through that gap there. Uh, and then I can bring in all of the pieces, which as you can see are not assembled. Uh, they're pretty much all new. Uh, I've had to get them far and wide because of all of the color choices that I've done and some of the very unusual parts that I've chosen. Uh, that's not it. I've got a great big cup here of all the stuff I got from Lego Bricks and Pieces, including all the windows and a lot of black curved slopes. We've got that as well. Uh, no, that's not it either. I've got this great big bag of all sorts of other stuff that I've just been collecting to one side, including a few of the train bases. No, that's not it either. I've also got more train bases and all the train wheels and bogey plates and all stuff like that. So you can see what I mean now. It is an absolute mountain of parts to build these five things. Uh, and some of these parts have been very hard to source and, um, you know, find. So as usual, I'm going to do a couple of kind of disclosures, I suppose. Uh, the first one is that I don't know a lot about actual real life trains. Uh, so I'll get all the names of all the parts wrong <laughs> when I'm talking about them. Don't worry, don't feel you have to correct me uh, because uh, I usually get all the train buffs sort of pointing out all of the real life issues with my builds. I'm not trying to build uh, an accurate version of a real life train. I'm just trying to build a fun Lego train that kind of works in my city, Brick Nottingham. So by all means, uh, enjoy my build, but don't get worried about the accuracy because, well, I mean, have you seen Lego cars? They've got, uh, uh, they're very narrow and they've only got one person in the front kind of seated in the middle. So yeah, I don't think we need to worry about getting our trains to... Uh, uh, accurate either. Um, so I did look at real life carriages though for my inspiration and that's all it was just a bit of inspiration just to get the juices flowing just to look at a few different sort of alternatives for what I could actually do in Lego. Uh, and what I really wanted to do was build some fancy carriages, some really sort of swish ones that looked like they cost a lot of money to ride on. Uh, and that would be a really good thing to have pulled along by our wonderful steam train, of course. Uh, and that makes a lot of sense because you wouldn't be getting just a steam train for your normal everyday commute. Uh, and besides, I've already got two passenger trains that can do uh, that for you. Well, three of you include the Zeppelin, I suppose. So I was Googling fancy carriages, and one that obviously uh, was in that selection was the Orient Express. Now, that's a very famous train, and I, I'm 
well, I don't know how many different ones have been, but I'm fairly sure there's been all sorts of different routes and all sorts of different trains over the era with those uh, with that name, the Orient Express. Uh, but the one that really caught my eye was the Venice Samplon uh, train. And I think uh, Venice obviously is in Italy and Samplon, I think, is in Switzerland. Uh, so that is a relatively short route as the Orient Express goes. Uh, but I really like their wonderfully ornate carriages. Uh, and here's a picture of a model of that train. Uh, uh, now, as I say, I'm not trying to copy this one, but just use it as inspiration. And the first thing that I really liked, really, was the colour scheme. Uh, the fact that it's this lovely dark blue, which really sort of matches the dark blue brick colour in Lego. So that's really good. And the white roofs. Mmm, white roofs. You can see where I'm going now. Um, but what I did do was check, first of all, on Bricklink to see if dark blue pieces were available in the sort of quantity that I was going to need. And it was a bit disappointing. Uh, for things like, say, modified bricks, which add a lot of texture and interest to, say, the size of the carriages, uh, there was absolutely nothing uh, available, really, that was very useful. So I thought, well, hold on, what's another really sort of nice sort of quality luxury colour? Uh, and I thought about dark green. Uh, now, there aren't many more uh, modified bricks in dark green, but the ones that are there are a lot more useful, uh, as you can see here. So it kind of encouraged me to do the switch. Uh, and as I kept designing and kept building, I realised that um, dark green did have just <laughs> all the colours I needed. And one of the most important things was all these windows, uh, which would have cost me an absolute fortune when they were only uh, available as part of the uh, 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 Grand Emporium uh, but since then I've been using other sets uh, and well as I say you can get them direct from Lego Bricks and Pieces so it's made dark green a viable train colour which I'm very happy uh, to say so uh, yeah I was inspired by that train for its old school colour which I've kind of changed to uh, dark green but also that white roof uh, it looks very classy and I really like its sort of aerodynamic ends and when I sort of thought about using this piece I thought that that would make it look extra swish uh, and then the middle pieces of the roof would be these slopes. So I think it'll end up with the fact that I won't be able to take my roofs off very easily, but to be honest, I don't do that on all my carriages already. Uh, I mean, the last thing I did with a, with a removable roof, I think, was my caboose, uh, and I don't think I've been in it since, so I don't think that's a massive loss. Uh, so, yeah, let's get on with the build then. I'm going to have to keep referring to my design files because I don't know how to build this because uh, <laughs> I haven't even looked at it since I did it on LDD. So I'm going to kind of be doing it in sections with you. Uh, and, well, it will be a bit of a learning journey and a, a sort of first sight for me at the same time as it is for you. So cool. Let's get on with that build. All right, well, I'm going to start at the bottom just so I can have the carriages rolling around annoyingly while I'm building all of the top bits. But uh, yeah, anyway, <laughs> so let's get on with that. Uh, so I took some inspiration from the Emerald Knight set, uh, 10194, when I was building the sort of lowest part uh, of this on LEGO Digital Designer, just because, well, it looks very grand as well. I don't want to copy its carriages or anything like that, um, but I did want it to... Uh, be similar in many respects. So I've kind of gone for the slightly longer set of bogies uh, with the wheels on uh, than I would normally do for a normal sort of Lego carriage. Uh, and that's just because they're a bit more grand. And then they have this kind of built-in step up to the doorway for, I suppose, the uh, train men when, um, you know, it's not in station or something like that. And anyway, it just seems to be a bit more sort of greebling and a bit more sort of interest on the end there. So basically... I'm just making them even longer. Uh, and that's partially as well, uh, because I'm building this whole train on 6x28 bases rather than 6x24, which I'd usually use. And I think that's just a bit more reflective of the real sort of life proportions of a rail carriage. They are quite long. In fact, these ones for the real life uh, Orient Express are ridiculously long, miles longer than uh, this. Uh, but this will do. Uh, so I think uh, having a slightly longer bogey kind of in the middle of these makes a lot more sense. So I have the doors right on the end. So I'll quickly build another one of those. And I think I've taken a bit more inspiration from the uh, Emerald Knight and getting the centre section of um, all of this done as well i.e. the centre section on the underneath, I don't even know the name of that, all of that sort of workings and stuff that's under there. Uh, and 
Uh, I ended up doing quite a few different versions of that, as I've sort of told you in earlier videos, and the fact that I ended up uh, choosing lots of bricks that were either very expensive or very hard to find in quantity. And as a result, I had to change kind of the design for that uh, several times. So anyway, there we go for our bogies. Uh, and I've done two more over here just now, just so I knew what I was doing on camera. <laughs> Got to kind of remember it each time and do it again. So there we go. Uh, and there we've got our two bases. Very nice. So clearly we need something in the middle to kind of fill up that gap. And that's where these bricks come in. Uh, and it's really good to always fill up the uh, kind of holes uh, in the base level above because they've got these holes so you can put power functions cables through and all the rest So actually I haven't got enough of those pieces. There we go. There's one I've got a great big pile of bricks just to my left in a massive mountain That's kind of hard to find anything in um, So basically when we connect this underneath there it will kind of plug both of those gaps kind of like that So that's always a good thing to do and then at least from the underside uh, Or from the inside rather it looks seamless which is what we like. Uh, so then we're just gonna have kind of a setup where we've got a bracket going around the corner, just for a bit more detail, and some black plates on there, just so we get the right sort of distance away from the center. And I'll do the same thing on the other side. One, two, three, four in the middle. Then I'm gonna need some of the pieces from our bricks and pieces hall, which are these curved slopes, these sort of four by two ones and I think we'll have them sort of sloping down slightly. Now we could get some stickers and put them on these in due course for the sort of uh, oil and water and all that sort of stuff. And then I've got these modified bricks which I really like and really quite cheap and easy to find as well. So that makes them doubly good uh, to go on the other sides. Uh, and again that gives us just a bit more sort of greebling and uh, sort of interest to the build. So then I should be able to sort of slide that into the underside there. Now I haven't tested any of this because I haven't built it. So for example, is that too high? It looks a bit tucked in actually now I look at it. Maybe it needs to be a bit lower. Also, uh, will these wheels be able to turn enough? It looks like they will, so that looks fine. I'm also mildly concerned that these uh, things are going to have trouble getting around my city given that they're extra long. But then again, I do have the uh, similar sort of thing going on with my um, buffet cars and double-decker cars and things like that, which are on those 34 long uh, bases. So I'm hoping that we won't have any clashes there uh, when we put this into Brick Nottingham. But anyway, there we go. There's my first sort of cut of it. And yeah, I think it's looking pretty good. Give you a more close-up view of one of them. Uh, and then we can move on to the next step, which is obviously doing something on the top of the base. Cool. Looking good. Okay, onto the base layer then. Uh, I've just added a couple of grill pieces and tiles onto the very corners, just to save me a bit of time on camera. Give me a bit of a frame of reference of where to start putting the green bricks, or dark green bricks more precisely, uh, to the base. And you can just tell already, this, this is just an awesome color for a sort of classic uh, traditional carriage. I think that just looks absolutely amazing. Uh, the gaps are for modified bricks, which we'll add shortly. Uh, but what I want to focus on first are the doors. Now I'm doing a door right on each of the four corners above these little steps that we did earlier. Uh, and this grill therefore is going to be kind of the top step or the step that you'd uh, step up onto from the platform. Uh, and that tile is just so we can accommodate the fact that they're uh, all at an angle. Uh, and I've done that. Uh, kind of as a style feature to kind of bring each of the ends of the carriage kind of in a bit And that's the same sort of effect that we'll be having on the roof when this is in it will sort of be coming down a bit in height But it's just sort of kind of put an angle on each of those corners uh, And that's very much in, uh, inspired by that that train as well So I'm going to use a hinge plate just to create that angle uh, and that won't mean that I can use this hinge to open a door because you might think I'll be doing it that way so I can kind of open the door and get in. Uh, now I'm not going to be having functional doors uh, which a lot of you perhaps won't like I don't know but um, I don't have functional doors on all my other trains uh, apart from maybe my cargo trains I suppose where they've all got sort of cab doors um, but none of my passenger trains do uh, so 
you know, I'm not, I'm not in a massive uh, uh, hurry to do it for this one, really. Uh, but what's more important to me is that I get the really nice angle that I can get by doing this. So you can see I've had to use a lot of different plates and small pieces to get the proportions of this just right. And I think that's one of the biggest challenges of designing uh, a set like this. And I've got this sort of gold piece coming out as the handle that you'd grab. So in my mind, when this is in position, you'd kind of grab that door handle and the door would open kind of hinged uh, from the left when it was this corner, uh, but it's going to look like it's hinged from the right. So to start with, you could kind of have it like that, showing off what will be the bottom uh, tan coloured stripe and the beginning of the top tan coloured stripe. But when it's in its final position, it's going to be kind of tilted a bit like that. So you'll see that hint of the grill uh, and it'll be coming in kind of one whole uh, stud distance as well. So I'm hoping we don't have any clashes on the end as well because as I say I've only really done this digitally <laughs> so it is sort of uh, a bit nervous at the moment. So if we do one on the other side, I have to get uh, all these little pieces done in the same way, then we can start to look at how it looks like. So there we go, no, no, no. some window necks. I've just catapulted a small piece under there, better rescue it before I can't find it. And then some more here. Right, so there is door number two going on that end. So it's a bit hard to imagine how that's going to look, even if I do two more that I just made earlier and put them on the other side. Um, but hopefully, you, if I show you it from the top, you'll start to see how that's sort of curving in at the ends. And that's the look that I was going for. So, yeah, that looks pretty good. Right, so I'm going to build four more of those using these pieces to do the second garage, just so we've got uh, more to look at today. Uh, and then we can start building up the sides in the middle uh, and then maybe the ends. Okay, all four corners done. I'm thinking I might lower that. I don't know, it's already starting to bug me. Do tell me what you think about that. I think it's sort of slightly tucked under, if you ask me, but maybe they're a bit streamlined uh, in real life. I don't really know. Anyway, uh, on to the next bit. Uh, so I've left these gaps for some modified bricks just to give it a bit of texture to the side. And I think that's always important on a build like this. If it's just uniform bricks, then it kind of looks a bit boring. And uh, we didn't have many choices with dark blue at all. Uh, so dark green we did. We had the normal sort of grill brick, one by two, but they're incredibly uh, expensive and hard to get actually, as it turns out, because they were used in you know rare sets like uh, early Harry Potter ones and things like that. Uh, but these ones are a bit easier to find, even though they are almost as rare in the number of sets they just weren't as desirable so I can put three along each side just to give that very small bit of texture and it really does make the difference uh, I think anyway uh, a bit of sort of ribbing along the sides so that's all that does uh, but I do think it's worth the effort uh, and then we can finish off our first tan stripe continuing the one that we started on the doors uh, just with a plate layer and do that on both sides and that's what's going to make this train quite bright actually it's not just a solid lump of dark green we've got the two stripes as you can see and you already know that we're going to be having a white roof so you can just imagine that it's going to look rather fantastic if you ask me it certainly does on LDD <laughs> we shall see if that uh, transpires to real life indeed uh, I've used a, a dark uh, bluish grey base here uh, for the train base. I was going to have it black so the sort of difference between the wheels and the carriage was sort of blurred a little bit more but it turns out they cost an absolute fortune as well and if I was getting five of those that probably cost me about £50 so uh, I just went with a much 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 more common uh, and reasonably priced dark bluish grey ones but I think uh, that looks fine as a kind of industrial sort of coloured stripe but it's going to be pretty much level with the platforms when it's in anyway so yep that's good. Uh, so the next level is just using these three tall windows uh, and I tried with all sorts of different pillars uh, and we will see some pillars sort of in between windows later on in different types of carriage but for the standard carriage it just looked better without it kind of looks more traditional and more old when it's solid windows from one end to the other uh, just to let in as absolute much light as possible and the benefit of that is that we'll see the inside scenes a lot better as a result uh, so I'm not going to add all of those on 
uh, in one go because that will bore you. So here's the one that I started earlier, the other one. Makes sense doing two now. <laughs> that wasn't uh, the original plan to keep pinging between them, but I think it's going to work well. So here we go. There we go, the windows all the way along. And you can start to see the doors at an angle are going to sort of chime with them. But then we've got the second stripe, of course. And this one is going to use some slightly different length plates, just so we can kind of give the whole thing a little bit of strength. So I'm using three long at each end, just to sort of bridge over those windows. Looking good. I'm liking it. I'm liking it a lot. Alrighty, so that is the main sort of sides of our carriage and I think that's looking very shiny, new and rather fantastic, well worth spending a lot of money for a ticket. Uh, now before we move on to that lovely white roof, we really have to focus on the ends where I'm going to have that kind of tunnel that you can walk between carriages uh, and kind of have a bit of the curve that will bring those uh, sort of curved roof edges to a uh, reasonable conclusion. Uh, so I'll get on with, well, first of all, finishing this one's windows uh, and then getting the pieces ready for that. All right, all windows in, so on to the ends. Uh, and these were quite complicated to design as well, given that they use, again, loads of small pieces. So we get these stripes in the right place and everything looks absolutely perfect from every angle. But just going to be building this up very gradually. And we need one window Another small one, just like we've got in the sort of side doors on the end. Uh, a couple more plates there. And then lots of one by one bricks because you can't get a one by one by three brick in this color. So there we go. There's kind of the end. Uh, but then to sort of give that a bit of a sort of tunnel type look, I've got some of these modified. A one by one by one and two third type bricks that have got the modified studs on. I've got those studs facing to the outside, so we'll see what they're for in a minute. And I can kind of pin the whole thing together using one of these uh, curved slopes with a kind of, well, plate on the back. <laughs> it's kind of a, sometimes it's under curved slope, sometimes it's under modified brick. But anyway, uh, there you go. So that's that. So that is the sort of end bit, which is bringing uh, the kind of end of the carriage uh, in a bit on both the sort of uh, width because it's only four wide and on the height there with that curve uh, and these studs are to hold one by four tiles on the end because when I looked at the pictures of my sort of inspiration of that uh, Orient Express train the kind of uh, connecting bits that are all in black rubber or whatever they're made of uh, kind of have these metal sort of plates on uh, that look well, kind of protective, I suppose. And maybe that's so if you're a passenger moving from one carriage to the other and you sort of happen to get jolted into the side, it would stop you going all the way through that rubber uh, to your uh, doom, uh, but would uh, prevent you from falling out. Or maybe it's to stop people in stations getting on. I don't know uh, if it works, uh, works both ways or what. Uh, but essentially, that's what they're for. Um, so you'll have to tell me what they're called and what their actual purpose is. But when we put that on, we can see the... Uh, stripe is continued along the bottom and then we can just bend these doors in just a little bit and you'll see it's, it only allows you uh, to bend it in a very little bit and that's the kind of shape we're going for so that is it all finished at one end so I might as well just get on with doing the other one uh, while I am here and I've got the pieces so then we can have both all done at the same time It feels so satisfying doing this now. I've been really, really looking forward to this just because I suppose it's been built up now. Uh, hopefully it's not the disappointment in any way, having been built up too far or anything. Uh, it's been built up in my mind personally just because of finding all these pieces, as I say. So let's put them on and then we can hold it all together. I should have done that at the end. Anyway, here we go. This will hold it all together strongly like that there's the other one and that'll look good from that angle as well not that we'll probably ever be looking at it from that angle but i like to have things very complete as you know and just tilt that in and tilt that in just a little bit wow how about that and if we bring in its buddy that i learned how to do it on <laughs> then we've got that and i just think that this sort of subtle very subtle sort of bringing in at the ends looks absolutely great 
that's what made me so excited about showing you uh, everything. You can just imagine that whizzing through. And I'm hoping that these sort of extended bits, because the gap between them is very slight indeed. That's another uh, sort of bit that I'm scared will actually clash when it's going around the corner. But I reckon it can probably go quite a far sort of bend before they actually touch. I think that should be all right, but that's definitely a lot closer uh, than normal Lego trains are when there's two adjacent carriages, although it is better reflective of real life, I think. Right, so you can see where we're going now with these pieces. Uh, I can't put them on just yet because, well, I need to build up the walls a little bit more and do the insides, uh, but you can kind of see that that is going to go on there. Oh, wow. <laughs> and that is going to go on there and look rather fantastic. Oh, yeah. This is going to look great. Cool. So I'm just going to put in a very sort of perfunctory inside, just some basic tables and chairs uh, for these very standard cabins. Uh, there'll be a lot more interesting cabins on, well, the alternate carriages in due course. So, yeah, cool. Let's get on to the next stage. All right, we are nearly there. We've got our ends. We've got our sides. We've got a passenger. <laughs> I'm going to add some more. A very, very simple table in between uh, two pairs of chairs. I could probably get three sets on, uh, but to be honest, I'm not that bothered. As long as you can see that it's got some people in it, and I'm just using some relatively normal people rather than special ones that I'll keep for my streets. So I'll just add him there. And yeah, that's looking pretty good. As long as it's got somebody in it, that's the main thing. Uh, and then for the next level, I'm just going to add a few more green bricks. Uh, and these slopes are vital to kind of mesh with the funky ends that I've got for the ends of my roof. So they just need to overhang those doors by one stud on all four corners. And then we've got uh, a brick that was available in dark green, this 12 long, which is really nice. So I didn't have to buy lots of small ones to do that. And that just closes in that second tan stripe within the dark green section, which I think looks really, really good. Uh, and then we can get to the final bit, which is definitely the best in my opinion, which is adding this wonderful white roof. Oh, look at that. And then look back at the original sort of source material and tell me that that isn't a very similar sort of end. I think it is. Looks really good. And this is when I was saying that, um, as far as I was aware, at least, this was kind of a unique way of doing a Lego rail carriage because I'd never seen it done with this type of roof using these uh, three by six uh, slopes as well. Um, definitely not with these curved ends anyway. And I thought that it just looked really good. And I'm just going to link it kind of together, give it a bit more detail with some two by two round tiles on top there. I think that makes it just broken up a little bit. There'll probably be air vents or something like that in real life, presumably. They're a bit hard to flick on, but uh, there we go. And I'm thinking that these roofs will be incredibly hard to lift off, <laughs> to change the uh, passenger scenes and have a peek inside because of the pieces that I've chosen to use. But I think the look that we're ending up with is well worth it. So I'll just put that final piece on there and then we can have a really good look at them. And you can see the ends of the roof sort of tie in with the kind of ends of uh, the uh, sides with coming in. But there we go. There is our wonderful and quite tall in the middle, admittedly. Uh, but I think it's compensated by the fact it comes down at the ends. Uh, wonderful passenger carriage. And here is the one I just did to learn the final part of the technique as well. So we've got two. And I think they're very much in keeping with the train that's going to be pulling them, the Flying Knotsman. Uh, but do tell me what you think. Very, very old school, traditional, expensive looking carriages. Now, what I'm going to do in future weeks on future videos is build uh, three more carriages, but basically convert one of these to a specialist function. So I'll just have one normal one. I'll convert this to have a specialist function uh, and add three more as well. So we will have ultimately five carriages, all different. Uh, but yeah, I'm really loving this. The dark green is probably the best aspect of it. But uh, getting all those tiny pieces to make the very intricate ends, which you can kind of see into the carriage, uh, and these angled doors and the sort of details with these bricks on the sides. But most importantly, this wonderful curved kind of streamline 
aerodynamic, uh, sort of shaped roof. Uh, and I suppose the real test will be at the end when we've got them all done, whether it will go around corners. I think it will. I don't think those are going to hit at any normal angle on my track. So, yeah, the only thing I think I'm not 100% happy with is maybe this bit being a bit too high, a bit too sort of concealed behind that lip of the train base. Uh, but I very much like the dark bluish grey steps coming up right underneath the door and being part of these kind of longer... Uh, uh, bogey plates yeah and with the windows being as sort of prominent as they are and as sort of broad as they are it allows us to see all of the wonderful scenes inside and I've had quite a few uh, uh, suggestions for scenes inside and a few people have actually suggested sort of having a murder on the Orient Express type sort of scene going on where maybe we've got um, you know a Poirot or something like that trying to solve a crime I don't know if that's going to work in the sense that you'll never see it ever again but then you know me I sort of do have quite a lot of details that I'll never see again you know boxed inside a building or something like that so maybe I will uh, but I think this white roof sort of steaming around Brick Nottingham will be a sight to behold, but not a sight for today. Uh, I think we spent far too long doing the first two carriages in detail to do train cam or, or even going around the city with these. So you'll have to tune into a later episode of this, part five and part six, uh, so we can see them in action. But uh, for now, do tell me what you think of what we've done to date. <laughs> Well, I do hope you like these as well. I've got to say I'm amazed with them. Uh, they are just as good as I thought they'd be, uh, having looked at only Digital Designer before. Uh, I was very happy with those digital plans, and I just think they look rather epic uh, in real life as well. It'll be even better when we've got the variety of the five different cars, including things like a baggage car and stuff like that. Uh, so yeah, there's a lot to look forward to as well. So as always, thank you very much for watching. It is appreciated. Do remember to like, comment and subscribe for more awesome LEGO videos. And if you value this channel, there are many ways in which you can support it. Do check out the links in the description below. And next time on Robin Hood Bricks, we'll be having a brick haul this Wednesday. Uh, and I've already got quite a few big packages come from you. And if you do want to send in a package to the channel as well, you can do using this address. Uh, so we'll do those on top of a BrickLink order that I've made in the meantime for all these other future builds that I've listed at the beginning, the supermarket, restaurant, ride amendments, daily bugle, all sorts of things, secret one, two, three, four, five. <laughs> uh, but whatever we get to on Friday, which I'm hoping will be a fairground after the rather shorter uh, memorial video last week, uh, just because of a complete lack of time in real life, sadly, but it was really good fun. Actually, it got about the same views or better than a lot of my videos, so maybe I should do two minute ones in future rather than 30. Uh, anyway, uh, whatever we get up to, I'm sure we'll have great fun. So until then, see you!